So this is where we're currently sitting on the life-size Master Chief print. This thing is really big. I had to double check the measurements of this thing to make sure that it wasn't going to be too big because these legs are really, really tall. For reference, I'm six foot three and these legs just dwarf me. But if you take a look at this image, it shows kind of a comparison of what we've got so far compared to what we have left. And the torso is luckily a lot smaller, so this should come out to be just over seven feet tall, just like Master Chief is. So let's go over some numbers quick so you guys get a sense of scale for how big this project is going to be. So for the lower body and both legs, the total print time comes to 1,216 hours, or just over 50 days of 3D printing time. The total cost of the filament, which I calculated by weight, comes to 33 pounds of filament, or around $285 of filament so far. Now you can definitely bring this number down if you print at you know lower resolution, or use a larger nozzle, or lower infill but I want to finish this thing, and so I'm printing it at the best settings that I know how to do that at. But in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I assembled this thing and a few other tricks I've learned along the way. So let's get right into it. So the main glue that I'm using to hold all this together is Loctite Spray Adhesive, the 300 rated heavy duty version. I like this glue because it's a spray adhesive, very easy to apply, and it'll decently hold everything together. We're gonna use some more glue in addition to this type, but this is what I'm using on the flat edges to connect to each other. I'm also gonna be using the toothpicks that I mentioned in a previous video. These are gonna help align the parts together and provide some extra support. Now, the first thing I like to do when I'm putting these together is to put the toothpicks in the keyholes. Not all the holes in the sides of the model are viable, unfortunately. Some, some of them just didn't print well or they didn't intersect with any infill, so they're pretty brittle. So I have to try and find which holes are gonna work for this, line them up, and then we'll apply our spray adhesive. Now I apply the adhesive pretty liberally, and then you need to wait a minute or two for the glue to kind of tack up before you actually join the pieces together. So I'm going to start the same process on the next two pieces that I want to join while I'm waiting for that. But once that glue has tacked up, you should be able to press those two pieces together and then holding the pieces together for a few seconds should allow that glue to fully bond. Now this whole process took a bit longer than I thought. I started it on a TikTok Live. So if you guys were able to watch me there, you could see me put it all together. But the overall process took around an hour and a half to do both legs and then the lower body. So it was a bit of an effort. Now, along with the spray adhesives, there are a few other ways I'm keeping these prints together. One being I'm using a soldering iron to actually weld some of the edges together. So those two sides of the edges actually melt and then join together. It doesn't provide a super strong hold, but definitely a quick one. So it's great at holding pieces in place while stronger glue sets. Some of that stronger glue, for example, is gonna be E6000. And I'm just going to squeeze it in between some of the cracks of the pieces. When you're printing this large, you're probably going to have a few pieces warp just a little bit, so you'll get these little cracks between some of the larger pieces. And so I'm just going to squeeze as much glue as I can in between those pieces to make sure that the bond is still strong. You wanna work it in with a gloved finger so you don't get any glue on your hands, and then wait around 24 hours for this glue to fully cure. Now I wish I could tell you that everything worked great the first time around, but uh, here's a small clip from the live event where I was uh, filming assembling this whole thing. Okay. So yeah, that unfortunately happened before the glue was finished setting. So just re-welded the edges, applied a little bit more glue, and put the completed pieces far, far away. So after that glue finished curing, it actually kind of shrunk a little bit. So it made the gaps smaller, but not completely gone. And so I wanted to try something new to fill those gaps. And that is gonna be this 3D pen. It works a lot like a 3D printer, but you just clip off a little string of filament feed it directly into the pen, it heats up, and then you can extrude it out kind of like a pencil. And what I'm going to do is extrude out the plastic in between the cracks of the print, hopefully filling them in a bit more so that we don't have to use as much Bondo to fill them in in the future. This is my first time using a 3D pen, so it took some getting used to, but eventually it kind of clicked for me. And I'm actually pretty happy with how the technique worked out. It should fill a lot of the empty space between those prints and it was great at filling in large areas that otherwise would have taken a lot of glue. Now, as far as strength and kind of joining the prints, I don't know how well it kind of works for that. It didn't so much fuse the two pieces together as it, is, as it did kind of just fill the empty space between them. So this is more of a technique to make finishing the whole piece a little bit quicker and not so much about strength. But the glue and the welding should be more than enough to keep this 
set together from normal wear and tear. I still wouldn't drop it on the ground anytime soon, but it should all stay connected during the finishing process. I kind of use this technique across both legs and lower body. You can see where there's any type of blue or red or yellow. Those are the areas that I kind of filled in. They were also great at filling in any kind of overhangs or ledges. And when we go to smooth out this whole thing to prepare it for painting, this should help as a pretty good filler. So I'll probably do it for the remaining pieces as well, especially on the torso. So there you go guys, that is the current state of the life-size Master Chief build. Still a long ways to go, but we've got some pretty cool looking progress so far. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all again in the next video.